so begins another exciting episode of Is Football Not Soccer? with the four usual suspects. Uh, we've got Wig, our running back guru, uh, who may or may not be talking about some Eagles players today. He's hinted that he might, kind of a favourite of his. Uh, we've got Ben, a fan of the Browns, for recency bias maybe, that they're now a good team. <laughs> <laughs> you I'm might even it. talk about a Browns player that he likes. But probably Ooh. not, because they're all rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. We've got Dan's Bills, but let's face it, there is nothing there to like. Oh, so we're probably so not taking wrong. those. The Bills, at least they're not the Browns. Yeah, that's that's the strap line, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, it, I cannot wait for the season <laughs> to start. <laughs> yeah, oh, me oh, me oh. Me now, I'm full of a lot of talk, uh, but my Jaguars are <laughs> really uninspiring because we can't draft defensive players in any league that we play in. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about is the quarterback position because it's a little bit controversial in when and where and how you take one. We've seen that in our slightly stranger Superflex League, the quarterback position became more desirable. But in a normal league, say a normal half-point PPR, you know, relatively standard scoring type of a league, we all have varying ideas of when a quarterback should be taken as to whether they're valuable or not. Now, it doesn't so much depend on which players you want to take, but there are a couple, I think, that, that stand out as worth a mention. Now, everyone that I play with knows that my strategy is always to not take a quarterback. Basically, you take what's left in about the 12th round, something like that, and make do. And that, I think, is fine. And so, seemingly, that's the expert opinion. So that's one strategy with quarterbacks, that you, that you just don't, because their value is very similar. If you're only playing one, there are going to be more NFL teams starting a quarterback than there are people in your league so you've got essentially a wide pool to choose from. So it's more streaming. So you're looking at matchups, defences, you know, where the points are coming from. So if you're essentially trying to, I, I, with with streaming, what I'm trying to do is find that shootout. What game yeah. is going to go off? Like week one, the Steelers play the Patriots. Opportunity for quite a high scoring game from two yeah. pro quarterbacks. It's likely something like that will go down. Because I, I hear a lot of experts talk about streaming quarterbacks but they don't always you know fully explain that that actually takes a bit of skill because Lamar Jackson can have a blinding game one week but then might be terrible the next so you know you've got to know when to drop in drop out so how have you found that over the times when you've used that strategy well because I don't invest anything in the quarterback position I don't expect anything from it so mm. points is points at the end of the day like if you're gonna if you're gonna invest, say, a first five rounds pick in a player, it's because you expect them to play the majority of the season and be a starter in your lineup. And everything past that, I think, gets more and more expendable. And anything past the tenth round is just there filling up space. And with a quarterback that you didn't pay for, you can drop it as as easily because you don't have any any investment in it because you haven't paid anything for it. You can just swap it week to week, moment to moment. You know, even wake up one morning and just think, you know what, I think these guys are going to have a good game. I'll take the quarterback for that one. Because the floor of the quarterback position is relatively high, you can't really miss in any real sense. But hitting, because you're not biased on, on following up on an investment that you made, is more easy because you can follow the shootout. And you can just go, ah, whatever, it didn't work out this week, it's okay. Some players are more consistent and you miss out on that. But you pretty regularly, quarterbacks that are drafted very high will consistently miss for the season and not have been worth that investment. And I think you would just rather take something for free and make the best of it. There's enough of them around. Now, Wiggs got a different idea on quarterback because he's very keen on a one particular quarterback this year. It's only this year. And I, I've said it before that my, my views on quarterbacks are that you, you can leave them. You don't have to go for them early. But when Mahomes turns up, has a season like he had, you've got to have a little bit of an interest in him early on if you want him on your team. You might see his ADP on listings be a little bit lower, but when you're in a live draft, I've not seen him go outside of the first two rounds. Like no. he, he's gone in the first two rounds in every draft I've done. I'm up to four drafts of legitimate drafts, yeah, and he's gone draft. four times with it. Yeah, I think he, I mean he is a hot property player though, and yeah. I mean there's a there's a bit of a bias in a player that's been exciting recently, wanting to be drafted again for the future years. If you draft in a dynasty, you're going to want a player like Mahomes. I mean, it, he will go very high there. We've we've again spoken on it, but for me in dynasty, 
you've got to take an early shot on Mahomes because if he can replicate it, you've got that in your team for yeah. years to come. Absolutely. It, it's too big of a, a risk-reward not to take, I, I see it that way. A quarterback um, in the early years like Deshaun Watson, <coughs> similar value. You, yeah. you use I your first you round. more value this year on, on last year with the yeah. addition of Duke Johnson as well. Well, moment to moment, the Texans look like they're trying to get better and better for yeah. the, that passing game for him. And I think an addition like that is going to really help both Johnson and, and Watson's Watson, yeah, value. Yeah. I mean, I started looking to trade for the guy almost immediately. I like, he, he's a player, someone I like as well. I thought he was going to benefit yeah. under the Browns' offense, but then it looks like they've gone a different way with that. So if we're talking about sort of half-point PPR draft standard, so what Wig's putting forward is, for a talent such as Mahomes, you would, what, take a first-round pick on him? Second-round pick on it him? It very much depends on the format. But if we're talking just a standard one-quarterback league, yep. his value's not quite there with it. If okay. you play in the super flex, he's a first round pick all day. Okay. You've got to take the risk on him because the payoff, if it works, is potentially you're getting someone who's scoring 100 points more than the next competitor. Across the season. Is, across the season, but that's still too much. To it's enormous. Yeah. It's enormous. Yeah, it's not just a little bit. It's the same difference between Kelsey and real people. Um, yeah. Well, it, a, a good quarterback scores 300 points. Yeah. To score 400 is, is insane. It's a good number. So you, you've got to invest high. Again, when it's all ADP and the chips aren't on the table, people won't take him as early because you know you can pick a quarterback up later. Yeah. But when the draft comes around and Mahomes is staring you in the face, it's, well, it's a different animal. But it, what I want to look at is when he's staring you in the face and what you're giving up. Changing on the format. So for Dynasty, he's an earlier draft for me. Yeah. For Superflex, he's an earlier draft. For Standard, he drops a little bit. Two. Second round with it. So second round is still incredibly yes, yes. high for a QB. If you want him, that's where you've got to pay for it. So so essentially, you know, you could get Kelsey. Could get Kelsey. You could get Hyatt Mixon sometimes, player oh. of that sort of quality. Harry Kill. Yeah. 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 So now you are sacrificing a player of that quality to pick up a high-end QB, mm-hmm. and you feel like the difference between that and say, a Jared Goff in the eighth round. It's it's a points game. The whole game is a points game. And if my player scores 100 points more than yours over the season, there's a good chance I'm going to be winning more weeks than you are. Sure. And the difference between taking James Conner and Kerryon Johnson, second and third round picks with it where you've been dropping your quarterback on, is not going to be 100 points. It's not. It's going to be probably closer to 40 if there's much of a difference in them. And you're not, so you're not worried about regression? But there's a worry with regression with all players with it. Anyone well, that has an outstanding year, yeah. you would not expect more them. so with, with <coughs> yeah. Holmes than anybody else. Though. Yeah, because he's got more to lose with it. Yeah. But even if he lost 50 points off it, James Conner could regress. James Conner's situation isn't the yeah. same. Are you yeah. comfy taking James Conner in the second when you start worrying about all the downsides of him? Because I've done no, that in a league not. and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this was the story with Kamara, wasn't it? And as an outlier player, Kamara had an absolutely stellar year, followed by a stellar year. And he just didn't regress. He was amazing. But he's the outlier in that regard. And a lot of players, you know, you do see them trend downwards as whether it's players who were, you know, figured out is the term, isn't it? Where their play style or whatever has been scouted then and defences adapt to a particular style. And that could happen to Mahomes. But although I don't see it myself. I think he is going to be a player that stays in the very high it's tiers. Probably mm-hmm. not going to be 100 points more, but even if he regresses by half of it, he's still 50 points more, which is a huge difference in this game. Mm. Well, if, if Kelsey was only worth 50 points more than Trey Burton last year, then it wouldn't be the difference between taking one in the second and one in the ninth. No. It, the fact that it's a difference of around 120 points is why you take Kelsey that early. It is, but that's taking a, a low down tight end with it. Who's the yeah, next, some hype, didn't who's the next tight end after him? After Kelsey. Ertz or Kittle would be the two. Yep. But, and they're very close. How many points was Ertz less than Kelsey? Uh, I think about 20. So about 20 points between them. Where were, there was 100 points. Between first and second QB. Yeah, quarterback. So yes. It's, it's a point. Well, was Patrick Mahomes difference. drafted last year? Oh no, you can no. pick him up, which is that's right. Yeah, and steal with it. That's and right. It, it's it's also the same with George Kittle, a player that only very yeah. rarely was actually drafted as a playable option. And these aren't typically positions where someone just comes out of nowhere and scores the mad points. Not typically. 
can't really account for Kittle turning up like that with it. You've well, really got to know. Account you've for Kittle. really yeah. got to know your situation there with it. Absolutely. Be very keyed in. Yeah, you don't find too. But we're a little bit comparing apples to oranges with Titans yeah. and quarterbacks. We we need, these are these are highly valuable positions for your team because where where tight end your option is score a lot or score very little and very, you know there's not a lot of in between ground. The quarterback position has a lot of in between ground. Some particularly poor choices mm. and some particularly good choices. Where tight end is dependent, not so much week to week. But quarterback is very much dependent week to week on who will have a good session so you might have seen someone like ryan fitzpatrick do exceptionally well at the start of last season and then not so much in any future game after that would you draft fitz magic no you can't justify it but we've got very opposite ideas here with quarterbacks as it stands mine is really limited to pat mahomes i do like deshaun watson but i'm far more sensible in where i draft okay so so let's say watson let's say watson then where would you draft him? If um, you were going to take a quarterback early... Yeah, if, let's again, say if we're talking just standard one quarterback with it, I, I'd feel uncomfy taking him early. I, I just would. If it's, it's if it's, first, we, fifth, first I was going to say, fifth, fifth round is, is where I've seen him with yeah. it. And I look at it and I think, at the fifth pick with it, if I'm taking Deshaun Watson, that's my flex pick there. So I'm, I'm dropping... So you've got your two running backs, your two wide two receivers, backs, two wide easy receivers, fifth position you fill in. That's it, yeah. So it's, it's are you willing to trade them out for your flex? And in the mm. fifth, you can get someone who's a, a real quality yeah. player. When it comes to the sixth, you, you start scraping a little bit more then. So you, yeah. so you wouldn't? So you probably leave it for a round, try and get in the sixth? It, it depends where you're about yeah. in the fifth yeah. you are. If you're at the start, you're probably not going to want to be taking him. But towards but, the end, you might feel it. That's it, but... Watson could well have a year that is comparable, if not better, to Mahomes because yeah. he's he's got good talent around him and he's a good player mm. and he can rush the ball a bit, yeah. which adds to your points on it. Mm. Yeah. So going super early for a quarterback, probably not preferred. Well, it sounds a bit crazy with it. If you, if you want Mahomes, though, if you want him, you've got to pay early. So whether or not you value him as a fourth-round pick, if you want him, you've got no choice. You've got pay to up. take him early yeah. or you're not having him because someone else will. Now, now, Dan wants to take Josh Allen in all formats. Uh, <laughs> well, Dan's known I, as a drafter of quarterbacks. When I think back to you, Dan, you, you draft quarterbacks in most leagues with it. Generally, I drafted Matt Ryan a couple of years ago in the first four rounds. The year before, he has his number two <laughs> QB. Yeah, but that's just my special thing, talent. Is drafting them the year before they go big. Um, yeah, you should really write a guide. When yeah, you write a guide <laughs> yeah. You're in advance. yeah. I mean, I've got all the time in the world to get that written as well for <laughs> yeah. next year. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've I generally draft a QB because from my experience of streaming QBs, you've always got your Rivers, your Stafford, quite often players of that ilk are often available to stream. And as good as the matchup might look, it doesn't pay off. Whereas if you know top five quarterback, it's the same risk. It's just whether you're willing to pay it or not. The top five quarterback from previous years going into the same offense or similar offense or an improved offense, you feel more, or I feel more comfortable taking a QB in the first five rounds or six rounds that I think will be of that talent because it's a player in that slot I haven't got to think about them for that for the rest of the year whereas if you're streaming a QB you have to really think a lot more about who you're streaming why you're streaming and what their defense that they're going up against is like whereas if you've got an early top five QB it's in it's locked that position's done let's focus on the rest of your now, lineup something relevant to Patrick Mahomes is his opponent and I'm not saying that you should draft Mahomes thinking about who his opponents are going to be. I'm saying that you should stream the quarterback who's playing against Mahomes that week. Because whoever yeah. you are, you will be in a shootout with the Chiefs. They're yeah. going to drop points on you. And the only way that you're staying in the game is if you chuck bombs. So if you're going to be a quarterback playing against Mahomes, your fantasy value is going to go up. Because you're going to, you're going to be pushing your offense. You're going to be looking to throw a lot more. You're not going to be able to run the ball as comfortably. Well, I think they've, they've strengthened their defense on the flip side of that. But that's certainly um, because, but their defense. I mean, while it was rated reasonably well last yeah, year, for still whatever reason, I think there were a lot of forced mistakes. To throw a lot that's more. right. They yeah. they actually rated out rather well, but it's not because they were particularly good. You know, they were mm. relatively porous defense. These points were put on them quite frequently, but mistakes were forced as teams had to rush the offense. Really, they were trying to put a lot of points on the board in a very short window of time, and so not every team can adapt to that quickly. There's a lot more passing plays. 
it's necessary for you to get the yardage quicker. Certainly. Mm. Uh, just more opportunity to make mistakes, which is good. In any game, you want your opportunity. You want your opponent to have as many opportunities to screw up along the way as you can give them. But that's someone that I'd look to, to stream week to week. So while I wouldn't draft a quarterback, I might consider streaming whoever's playing against my homes that week. Mm. Because that will bring the best out of them for fantasy points. Mm. Mm. Even if a few picks go along the way. Because there is a potential when you when you go top end QB. Yeah. And I've I've done this, I've put in, you know, Russell Wilson in, in the past, I've gone Drew Brees, Cam Newton. They're not as locked in as I thought they would be. Mm. Because you look at it and you go, Oh, they're playing the Bears next week. That's going to be a really bad game. Or, oh, their their offensive line isn't quite as good as I thought, and they're going mm. against Jacksonville, and he's just going to get slammed in oh, the face. Oh, I'm glad we mentioned that. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad someone said something nice about the Jags for me. <laughs> we were the Bills. We were the, oh, we were the, <laughs> next year it will be the Bills. <laughs> no one needs uh, to go against the Bills. They just run the ball because the Bills can't score points. But <laughs> it, is, it is true. You play if you played against if you played against the Bills last season, your stats were averaging to be. The Bills quarterback. And you didn't want the Bills quarterback. <laughs> they made everyone bad in that game. So it doesn't matter who you are. Second you know. So you've yeah. got you've got that worry. And Russell Wilson, there were periods where they just said, Russell, don't throw the ball, mate. Yeah. We're winning. You you just you just keep that ball safe. And and he and he wasn't scoring big points, he was winning games. So, you know, you're doing what you needed to do for his job, mm. but he didn't care about your little fantasy football team, did he? <laughs> didn't care if you were winning the week. Mm. Or Doobies, blinding first start to the season. Amazing. You're thinking, I've got this. Whoa. And then he then he just... I distinctly remember him having a three-point week yes. one, one week. Oh. And that, that hurt me oh. deeply in my soul that day. <laughs> that is painful. Because yeah. that week, I almost won as well I was like one point off winning my week <laughs> so if Breeze had just done something anything at all it would have been fine Cam people are big on Cam this year mm. you know best weapons he's got he could be, could be really good yeah or his shoulder could just fall off yeah you know it, it, it's a worry it, it yeah. is a worry and if you're streaming you don't have that worry but if any, everyone in your league is streaming it's more interesting wave away Ooh, it is. You wanted to lose. Time. Well, this is something that I was going to bring up with it. Yeah. Streaming is something that I've done before. It's, and it's something, something I've that done before. It's, it's won me a league before with it. But if you're streaming and you're streaming and everyone's streaming, then all of a sudden, apart from a couple who are holding on to the, the, the better good top end quarterbacks, then yeah, you can't guarantee that you're going to get those quarterbacks mm. you want because three other people might snap them up before you. And then you're left with an awkward choice. Do you take who's playing against the Bills' defence? You know, so you've got to get a no. nice, easy walk into at least 15 points. Or do you take a risk on someone who's had a 30-point week, an 11-point week, a 7-point well, week, and a 30-point week? You've made the point there, then. A safe, top-tier quarterback. In your opinion, going into this year's fantasy, <laughs> who are, say, the top three? Because yeah. we've, got, we've got Mahomes and the yeah. next three. The next three after my home, the, the yeah. safe options. Yep. So you've got Deshaun Watson, who's yeah. a safe, safe option with it. Matt Ryan, who looks like he's a nice, comfy, safe option with Seems it. safe. And when looks back, looks going to be safe hands. So, that, so that's what we're looking at. Those, those yeah. would be our Ugh. consideration for top four QBs. Yeah, but they're all waving a little red flag though, aren't they? Not any one of them. Arm. Yeah. ACL. Broken <laughs> ribs. I mean... Let's just hope the Houston's offensive line have decided not to just let people run past them into the QB because that man got sacked so many times well, last season. They're, they're shopping clowning around for a left tackle. Yeah, I bet that they are. Doesn't bode well. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't bode well. Yeah. So, so you've got to be a bit worried there. Yeah. You know, Andrew Luck at the moment isn't playing football. Like last year, his offensive line did exceptionally well. He was yeah, very well protected. He was Nelson was one, yeah. fantastic. He was great. But, I mean, there is a worry. They tend to lie a lot about Andrew Luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for all we know, they could be stitching his his leg back on yeah. and they'd be like oh it's a small bone issue <laughs> um, so he's not got one <laughs> you know, so if, you, if you're drafting now you can't draft thinking boom that's that done you know you but can't. everybody will well, be everyone can. should be well aware of, of everybody's situation so you'll now, find them Stan, would you, you like to mm. present a different quarterback as a safe pick than the four that have been previously presented 
I would, and it's one that I think you can get a lot later in your Josh draft. Allen. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not much to contrary belief. I, as good as a job, I think he'll do this year, leading us to the playoffs and, and so forth. <laughs> I think Lamar Jackson looks really oh, good, and you can get a safe pick. I disagree. I disagree. Okay. So, so is there anyone out of the top four that you think isn't a safe pick? Uh, I've been stung by Matt Ryan before, but <laughs> I think he's good. Level. It is changing offensive coordinator. So would you? So you're going to replace one of those top four with Lamar Jackson, who's coming out of that top four in redraft? Andrew. Yep. Okay, so you drop Lock out and you put Lamar in. You think he's more reliable this year than Lock is? Right, you Ben. As if we haven't mentioned. <laughs> he's make, shaking. Yeah. He's making. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. He's got one of the most off- impressive offences in the league. It's hard to argue with OBJ and Jarvis in the same catching core. That but looks like it's going to go well. Tight end, they've got a good running back. Every, yeah. They've got plenty of That's good news for Baker, isn't it? It's all coming up good. But, I mean, Providing they stay fit. Red flags, they are all there. I mean, who knows how this offence is going to run for a season? Who knows if Could OBJ... Play. OBJ just doesn't play full seasons. You know. He's missed the most games out of that draft class. Yeah. So, so you're pitching Mayfield's hat into Watkins, the top four. Absolutely. Who's considered injury so, prone. So which out of those top four that Wiggs presented would you take out in favour of Mayfield? I am not drafting luck at this point. Okay. Now if now if it wasn't, I don't know if 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 if, 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 oh. if he's fit, he's definitely there. I mean they're I all mean, they're all good, aren't they? Yeah. I mean it is, it is very hard. But Watson's got all the upside in the world. Ryan's throwing to Julio. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day... I mean, a very political <laughs> answer there says, Ben, you've got to take one of them out of that top four to put Mayfield in. I'm, I'm been in luck. You've been in and luck. And his dodgy leg, and his oh. dodgy shoulder. But it is a very impressive, I want how are you going to work Phil Rivers into your pick? I'd love Don't to. Quite. I'd, I'd absolutely love to. <laughs> I absolutely love a bit of Phil. <laughs> He's got more children than everybody else put together. He must go into the top four. <laughs> He's doing too much research on Phil Rivers. <laughs> the greatest NFL dad. <laughs> well, surely by quantity. The law of large numbers makes you the best eventually. One of them. Yeah, enough yeah, cracks at it. That's it. I don't know. I don't think I'd argue with Wig's proposition of the top four. I don't think there's any player that I would think I would want to take into that top four that could score as well as those four do barring some sort of health issue and the health issue of luck because of basically being constantly injured all the goddamn time it, it makes you wary of him mm. but I don't think I would pay a high pick for any other quarterback other than for luck for Ryan for Watson. Mahomes and for Watson I think those those top four are the ones that I would be will, willing to pay somewhere in the fourth and fifth round for depending on what, what comes to me. And I don't think any other quarterback I would consider paying those sorts of prices for. There's one honourable mention with it that we're not talking about, which is Aaron Rodgers with it. Oh, yeah. Because I, I don't think he's that safe yeah. player. But for me, he's firmly the fifth yeah. behind yeah. him. So, yeah. And just so I'm clear, I wouldn't pick Lamar Jackson in the first <laughs> four quarters. I'm taking a, light, a late flyer on Lamar Jackson. I was going to say... I'm what? not. I'm not. I don't for a second think he, he's better than Andrew Luck. I mean, what, where's the ADP of Lamar Jackson at this point? Is uh, 130. I'm just going to say. 130. I okay, so it's the eleventh round. Yeah. Very often on the waivers, even in 12-team leagues, he's yeah. sometimes yeah. found. I think, I think that's unfair. I think the guy is going to be Definitely. fancy relevant. Just because yeah. of his running game, it's if, just if his not his bust approach. He's so reliant on running a touchdown. <laughs> well, potentially, yeah. The best defensive on, weapon. Unproven quantities is what we'll say at this point. Yes, I think. Yes. Yes. Well, Lamar Jackson has the potential to rush for 100 yards and score two touchdowns as well as throwing the ball on top of it. Well, throwing the ball, sort of. Throwing the ball a bit with it. Well, um, somewhere. But yeah, any QB with a rushing value mm, is something you've got to definitely consider going into your league. So, it's the rushing quarterback cheat. So, late round flyers, if we were all to pick one, if I was going for a late round flyer, if they're there, I like... Kyler Murray. He's not really a late round option anymore though, is he? No, that's the sad thing. If he's like, because I think he's going to be in the same area as Lamar Jackson. I think he's going to, he's going to be really good to watch as well. So that's a benefit. And he could just be a fantasy monster. Absolute monster. Yeah, he could be the Mahomes of last year. Well, just via his rushing. 
he rushed. He's he's got the best rushing stats would, of a, of would a you say, QB that we've mm, seen in years. Would you say he's a rushing quarterback in the NFL, or would you say he's a scrambling quarterback in the NFL? We haven't seen him rush, so yeah. I don't know. So at this Let's point, see how this so at this point, offensive point, line looks yeah. because what I saw from the preseason game the other night, they don't look like they have much in the way of an offensive line. So I'd say scrambling. <laughs> Well, that's what I'm thinking. I think there's going to be a lot of sideways movement more than forwards. I mean, you can find the out to Johnson, which is something that was lacking last year. They they never used him in the flat. They were averse to using Johnson in any kind of role. He's a great safety net. Well, yeah. So if you take Kyler as a as a flyer option, yeah. If, so if you don't draft one of the safe options. Yeah. You take Kyler late to see how he pans out. Yeah. And if not, ditch him for a stream. Where have you got a flyer? Um, Carson Wentz has been going really late. <sighs> yeah, over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and he's a guy who could be up there next year. We're talking about him in this top four conversation. I MVP. think what we're wary of there is that he won't play out the season. That's it, injuries. This yeah. is his problem. That's why he drops. But he's dropped too far. I mean, they must be confident in his health at this point to have allowed Foles to walk and look for a contract. He's not having the same injuries over and over. That's the thing. It's if, if you're having... The ACL was bad, though. The ACL's mm. bad, yeah. But it, there's a lot of players. We're talking to Sean Watson right now, potentially being the QB1. He's, only, he's got an ACL. Yeah, he's, he's only had yeah, one full sure. fit year. What about you then, Dan? you got a flyer? Josh Allen, maybe. Think it's Is it really? Or was it? I, I would never have known. <laughs> well, they've they've improved their offense aggressively this off season. Uh, it might not be for you, Le'Veon Bell's or Glad everything, the but they've really reconstructed their offensive line, so they've got him a bit more time. And space to do the running. Um, so there you go. Hot take. Bill's not as bad. The no nonsense <laughs> working class team. Not giving oh, out oh, there for all your glitz yeah. and your glamour. <laughs> We're down there digging in the trenches. Oh, that's where the games are won. <laughs> in the trenches. You say no glitz and glamour in trenches, but what what's Josh Allen most famous for besides his little his bit rushing of rushing looks phenomenal. But that cannon that he's got attached can, to his arm yeah, yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. And if any I know we've got a couple of deep threats. Yeah, John Brown, it. Robert Foster, both look great Pretty down. Exciting. So. I mean, imagine though if he did have a talent like Tyreek Hill who could stretch mm. the field and catch. Imagine if they'd got Antonio Brown and he'd actually gone there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, if he'd yeah. actually he's gone got to the Bulls. He's got the frostbite, so he knows what it is. <laughs> 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 Just testing out what I'm using the building like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was he actually just trying out a Buffalo? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Never went to France. <laughs> That's such a bad idea. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, guys. I, I can't move here. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my considered opinion is that a late round Derek Carr is the <laughs> absolute right answer. <laughs> we've talked about Antonio Brown how can you look bad when you're throwing the ball to AB you can play for the Raiders under Gruden and be called Derek it, <laughs> it is it is a legitimate thing though I mean yeah. he is an amazing wide receiver yeah. mad as a box of frogs <laughs> yeah. but if you are throwing to the top talent can you look good I mean Derek Carr's had great seasons what well, great season ah great season <laughs> but it could happen again should happen again, really. It really should. I mean, the guy the guy is decent. He knows how to play the game. He just lacked for options, I think, to play to. And now he doesn't have that excuse. He's going to have to up his game. And this is going to be his contract year as well, we suspect. This is going to be like his last year as a Raider. He's going to then have to look at another, another contract with the Raiders, who were basically in full rebuild. They're looking to completely gut the team and rebuild well, it. Well, he's got to get on with Gruden because he's there for a long time. That's right. And I, I don't see that happening. I think he is going to be looking for a contract elsewhere and he's going to have to make a case for himself this year, which means he's going to be looking to be his best self. So I, I think I think Carr's going to be in the best position to succeed that he's been in in his career. And if you can't make it with this and picking him up in the 20th round mm. I, I think I think that's probably the yeah. time to be taking yeah. someone like Carl my, my first thought was is this a 24 team league it's deep I think there should be an honourable mention for Jamie Winston on the James Winston Ooh, the yeah that's guy got something Ooh. to prove now I think the real honourable mention is for Joe Flacco because <laughs> Tony Romo said <laughs> that he is the steal of the off season and if anything, Romo knows. Romo does know. But so maybe he doesn't know. Check out their Broncos. <sighs> Take me some Flacco and see if he is the Fluco of old. <laughs> I don't think he's got so much to worry about his backup this year as he had last. So You don't think? 
No, I don't think. Drew Lock improved so much in one week. If he can yeah, make that yeah, kind yeah. of stride, he'll be winning the yeah. Super Bowl in week four. Drew well, Lock did not look as bad as he did last week. That, that is one of the big takeaways. On the flip side, Daniel Jones did look Oh, different. my boy, Daniel yeah, Jones. But he wasn't the same player no, that we no. saw a Two week ago. Goals. Yeah, it was not, not the crisp, clean no. passing that led to a yeah. touchdown. Five, five right. and a touchdown. That didn't happen, did it? No, no, that was definite steps back. That, yeah. that was a Giants kind of step forward. A giant step forward, yes. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> I don't think you risk in redraft going to look too much at rookie ones no, other no, than Kyle. Kind of worry maybe if, you've, if you feel like a late it's likely, flyer. It's likely that Dan Jones will be starting for his team later on this year. Oh, sure. So it's got to be worth considering. Depending well, on you how big draft your him. roster is, though, yeah, that's, that, what, that's what that boils no. down to. I can't help but feel, though, if you're drafting Kyle Murray at his current ADP, you are a crazy, crazy wild man. What yes. is his ADP? Um, sixth round? Yeah, sixth, going seventh round. Wow. Yes. I know. But in an unproven offence that was looking to add receivers. Well, think about this. There was very little hype for Patrick Mahomes going into last year, and but he was one of the better talents that were going to be starting, and no one drafted him. And I was like, don't worry about it, guys. I'm not going to draft a quarterback. I'll just take my homes when no everyone leaves him to yeah. me at the end. And if I'd have done that, I'd have looked like a very smart guy. Yes. And this year, to avoid being that not smart fellow that passes up on taking someone like yeah. Kyler Murray, people are now overdrafted him to make sure that they don't miss out. The same nice. as we got running backs overdrafted yeah. after we saw what Hunt and Kamara did coming out of nowhere. Yeah. So I think that's it. I think that's probably the, the overcorrection to yeah. not miss out on something good. So this year, someone will miss out on something important, maybe at wide receiver or tight end. Mm-hmm. Maybe Noah Fant comes in and crushes it. So we talked a little bit about tight end, uh, sorry, about uh, quarterback and how that affects our kind of draft strategy. You kind of have to know when you're going in as to where you're going to try and take your quarterback. And only if there's a very valuable pick left to you at a certain point would you deviate from that. And going into your draft, you kind of need to know which players you're going to be trying to take at different times to know what you need to take before and after it. I go in thinking I'm probably going to try and take Kelsey. I look at my draft position. How close is that to Kelsey's ADP? Do I think there are other players around me that might look to take the tight end early around my own picks? And then do I think this is realistic that I'm going to get him in? If it is, then I have to build my team slightly differently. The same as you would if you went an early pick on someone like Mahomes, taking your quarterback in the second round is crazy. So you've got to try and fill out the rest of your, at the very least your running backs with high tier talent Mm. before you move Mm. on to the rest of your team. And I could always get depth at the wide receiver position. There is no depth at tight end. And there's very little depth at the top of quarterback either. So are you buying in to any of the drumbeat currently going on for OJ Howard and Evan Ingram? So I liked Evan Ingram coming in in his first season. And it wasn't just because every other catching option just exploded around him, yeah. like some sort of Rambo montage where he was the only guy to come out. I think they should really stop monitoring everything and movement. <laughs> because it just seems yeah. like he's just standing there and, oh, oh, his thumb's damaged. Oh, he's popped. You yeah. know, where was he? He's banned for trying to have children. <laughs> All the receiving options that aren't Evan Engram aren't allowed to be played. I, but no, I liked him going in. There was some positive talk about him. I picked him up in that league and then traded him off and I felt really silly about it. I still wouldn't draft those players that early because I liked getting them as outside chances. I don't mm. think Evan Engram is probably going to be worth a, like a, a fifth or sixth round pick where his ADP is. You know, as far as... Uh, a dynasty pick's concerned. Do like Engram there. He's right at the start of his career. He's proven himself as a receiving target early. He will have value as a tight end going forwards. But in a redraft league, I think he slides much further down because his range of outcomes is much bigger to the point where he might be largely irrelevant overall scoring-wise because the Giants suck and don't score very much. As long as Saquon Barkley's on the field, he's going to have all the points. There is a different approach with tight ends. So from tight ends, we've got Kelsey and Ertz, who are repeat serial. Established. Yeah, they, right. they are scoring year after year good points from tight end. But year after year, we see people similar, not too far away from them, and their names change every year. Yeah. Yep. There's always different tight ends. If you leave the tight end for someone to take early, if you want Kelsey, you're looking to start the second round currently. He's, yeah. he's going real high. You want Ertz, you're looking the back end, start of the third. Yep. So you're looking end of the second. And Kittle around the same sort of time as And Kittle somewhere between the two or just after, never too far away. If you're giving up those picks 
you're leaving running backs for me, and I love it. <laughs> it's you, not even leaving players, it's just running backs that Wig wants. So. Yeah, you, you get to take that away. I don't have to worry about it. To the point that you make it less worrisome than quarterback. Because you don't have to worry who you're going to go for. Evan Ingram might do all right, but Will Disley might be the tight end one of the year. Yeah. And you've got no hope of knowing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sit back, relax, forget about tight ends, and pick one up in the 15th pick. Yes, that's the thing. Just forget it. Just leave them. Is that you dump them? If yep. you can't take one of the best ones, you dump. Them. That's yep. exactly it with it. And because there's such a shallow pool of good ones, you don't even have to feel bad about losing on the good ones because they'll be gone while you're still worrying about picking up a top end running back. Well, that, that's that's why I would want to draft a tight end early, and I would try and build my draft strategy around making a position available for a tight end high pick. Early for me is Ertz in the fifth. So we're way off in that. Yeah. If, if this was a negotiation, it would not be a fruitful one. I, I would be walking away. Yeah. Like, no deal, thanks. So you go into your draft and you think, okay, so who else might go QB early? And it helps to know your league so that you can the, yeah. so that you can think about whether or yeah. not you're actually competing with someone. Because the ideal pick position for the player that you want is one pick before someone else would take him. And there's, there's no argument with that. We've, no. we've played games before. That's where you want to be. So we know you're big on your early tight ends. Yeah. What's your thoughts on it with it, Ben? Tight ends? Yeah, where do you see it? I'm never willing to pay the price. A uh, top end second is normally where I would like to pick up either a wide receiver who I think has dropped out the first round. Yeah. Or a running back. Just because they can win your leagues and they can get injured quite easily. So in your first round you picked a running back, well, you know, get another elite running back. Yeah. Two's better than one. Yeah. That's why I, that that's my feeling. And I just think, oh, if I go Kelsey, yes, he's got all that upside. But I'll dump this later. Is music to Wigs ears. Draft more running backs. <laughs> <laughs> well that's the, the thing of thought is, is running backs get injured. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to anticipate they're not going to probably be there. It's rare for them to be running the whole season through. So you need depth at that position. You don't need depth at tight end, you know. And no. if Kelsey drops... Then it's different. Then I'll pick you, him. You consider him more. He's just uh, too too rich at that yeah. position. So I think I mean. Kill could get a lot of regression. I'm, I'm unsure yeah. I'm high on, on the Kittle reduction this year. Oh, yeah. you people... Yeah, I just don't see him being able to do that again. I think he'll score well. I think he'll be good. But we'll I think he'll be back targets. in line with yeah. high-end tight end numbers rather than up there with mm. wide receiver numbers. Well, i got faith in the boy. I think he'll <laughs> doing it again. Well, I think I know where Dan stands with tight ends with it, but are you more in Cal's camp of taking them early? No, I drafted Engram in the fifth in our dynasty league. Well, the last draft we did together, me and you were, oh, yeah, were, we're, missing were playing chicken and, uh, with who's going to pick a tight end last. Yeah, and I didn't draft one. <laughs> <laughs> and I got mine in the last round, so yeah. I lost. <laughs> no, I think there's, there's a lot more unknown talent. There's a lot of names being brandished around Hawkinson. There's the him doing very well. Dynasty formats where you're looking for those younger. Yeah, yeah. But Reader, yeah. I, I'm really big on Mark Andrews this year. I think he will be very prominent in I that think Ravens Mark offense Andrews because they break got a few hearts. Nothing else. Well, um, quality his, player at the Ravens. His uh, his pick position at the moment is about 140. Yeah, you see, I take that light, late so round fly that's every about time. Twelve rounds, twelve round. I I've seen him though. His ADP is a lot higher in the rankings. You'll you'll see him further down the list then he'll go when an actual draft happens. Yeah. The talk around him is pushing him up there to be in the Hoj Howard, the Oof. kind of... Yeah, no, they're, they're yeah. really talking him up. So as as we get towards the end of the preseason, and all the talk is the best thing out of camp is Andrews... It might be, but that doesn't tell you much about anything. I mean, well, it doesn't. The camp might be terrible, and he's the best <laughs> Exactly. It. Yeah. But it, it sounds positive, and it's some of the few positive tight ends news that you'll hear from camp. Yeah. So he's one of yeah. the few names that you'll be hearing going into your drafts in the next couple of weeks. Talking about ADP, though, before we, we came on for this one, we, we've been speaking about uh, who we feel is perhaps a, a bit of a steal at their current ADP. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to talk about a tight end, but unfortunately there aren't 
really that many <laughs> that are being kind of undervalued at the moment because it's, it's one of those positions that people keep an eye on. So what was yours then, Mike? Well, I was looking through. I've kind of I've vetoed myself from who I did want to pick, which is Emmanuel Sanders. But that's based on him being an injury. And now that the injury is lifted and people are noticing again that he's a wide receiver one potentially, instead of going around the 120 mark, He'll he'll be coming down to more reasonable kind of levels. I think you'll see him going in the eighth kind of round. Once okay. you've got your people mm-hmm. sorted, it looks like he's a potential step in for another wide receiver one. So I think it's a bit unfair picking him. But right next to him is Deshaun Jackson, which is yeah. the the eagle that was promised. <laughs> the eagle that was promised. <laughs> the eagle which is has a, landed. <laughs> a bit late for a flyer. He's getting on a little bit now with it. But in, in terms of having what you want in your flex position. So his ADP is somewhere around 120 right now. Is that what you're uh, saying? His ADP currently, I think, is around 111 on Fantasy Bros with it. Um, it's a little bit lower on the sleeper app, but he's around that kind of mark. You can pick him up and maybe maybe it'll be the 10th kind of round. Yeah. You, you might get him towards the end of the ninth is, is where he might go. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that you wouldn't feel too bad if you were picking him up maybe two rounds earlier if you're looking back at it once the season's kicked in and seeing the points that he puts up, I, I don't see him regressing over how he was at Tampa Bay. I think that he'll actually you know, maybe get a little bit more love from Wentz. And okay. overall, it's a better team. So Yeah, it can't hurt to be in a better team, can it? Yeah, it never yeah. hurts to be in a better team. I, I think that he might be a little bit of a steal there. You might no. find that he's, he's putting up wide receiver two numbers for throwaway draft positions. He was very hot and cold last year, wasn't he? A little bit, but then when you've got Fitz and oh, sure. uh, yeah, it was, James was, having the really, battle and they yeah. were both up and down at times. You need that chemistry with your quarterback. And you if you're having two different quarterbacks throwing you the ball, one will be throwing it five yards ahead of the other, whereas you know it, it's having that chemistry. And I, think a nice space for him. Will make I think there's a nice scoring. space for him at the Eagles. Yeah. He's enough of a vet to, to jump into the system and get yeah. going. So yeah, I think wide receiver two numbers mm. are entirely possible for yeah. him. Now, now Dan's going to tell us his hot take in a second, but what we've learned from Dan is that whatever he thinks is good now mm. won't be. Draft him next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Next year. This is a pick for <laughs> next year. <laughs> so for me, it's at, um, ADP of 89 on Fancy Bros. Uh, Latavius Murray, who he's gone to the Saints, who use two QBs regularly and often. Arby's. Arby's, rather, yes. Well, they do use two QBs as well. They yes, don't. yeah. Takes to do everything. Yeah. It's um, actually three this year. Yeah. Just random news. Yeah. <laughs> Off Mark Ingram, there was a lot of rushing yards, receiving yards, touchdowns. There was a lot to go around, wasn't there? There's a lot to go around, and that's even with Kamara performing at the level that he was performing at. Latavius Murray, a bit more of a third down back, you know, bulldoze forward. But those goal, goal line uh, touchdowns, are, he's going to be vulturing them. Because in the last four years of um, rushing touchdowns, he's scored the second most, which if is you, quite astonishing behind Gurley. If you're going to be a touchdown vulture, you want to be on a team that scores a lot of touchdowns, don't and you? that they do. Yeah, and the yeah. Saints definitely put up points. Yeah, I think he's... Maybe the 28th or 32nd running back off the board, which for a second running back from a team is a bit, puts you off a little bit. Well, either way, I don't think many people are going to disagree with you that that's a, a good guy to pick. Uh, uh, if, if you look at it getting him what, around the 7th round, was it? Yeah, 7th, 8th round. So yeah, he may be the running back 2 on the Saints, but that running back 2 position is a lot more valuable than running back 1 on, on some, some of the other teams. So probably more Bucks, valuable, for instance. Or say Lamar Miller probably. Oh, Lamar Miller, yeah. 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 It's yeah. like I can see a lot yeah. more, because of the touchdown upside, yeah. fantasy yeah. value than Lamar Miller would. If you are a Kamara hater, uh, oh, I'm not. Kamara, sorry, Kamara owner, you are going to hate Latavius Murray. <laughs> yeah. Because he is going to come on, he's going to pinch you, you touch Your down. one, two yard rushing touchdowns. Yoink, yeah. yoink, yoink. Yeah. And he's, he's going to proper wind you up. Yeah. Not that Kamara's, that's going to improve. Oh, no, he's still, still be very productive. But, but without him. Six points. Oh, God, you could only imagine what Kamara could do. Yeah. But he will come in and he will take that goal line work because that's why they've got him in. That's what yeah. he does. He could have a 12 touchdown. Have you got a hidden Browns gem for us, Ben, or something different? 
Now I've got something different. Oh. <laughs> There's all, nothing good at the Browns. All, <laughs> all the Browns gems shine so brightly. <laughs> that, that, that's I, like just, I mean, yeah, yeah. Higgins is a great pickup now. Has he cemented his spot as the third receiver? It's like, only because Callaway, is he injured or suspended for the I can't, first couple of games? Suspension. Callaway's suspended and right. he's pissed them off uh, and he's not been great. He's uh, just income. really, right. really just gone out of his way. Not that he's not a talent, because he is, but he's he's just just really not not done what he needed to do. I think they knew the suspension was coming. It wasn't like a a great big surprise, so they'd factored that in already. A bit of a shame for me that is because Callaway's on my dynasty roster, and I was hoping for better things oh. than this from him. But I did kind of buy into the Browns' offense. Yeah. Myself, like I, I think it's going to be a scoring thing. I think it's going to be fantasy yeah. relevant. Yeah. But I think everyone kind of is thinking that at the moment. So well, you can't, you can't get any of their stuff at value. It's too target rich, so. so yeah. So is the Rams. Too many, they went So fine. the only, the only Browns offensive player I'd be looking at for fantasy is Baker Mayfield because he's the one that's guaranteed the. Not the sure. Points. Yeah, oh, Chubb, yeah, Chubb. look at Chubb, yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, Sorry, yeah. yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why but not? You still got that hunt sort of. Not OBJ. In the, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't. It, OBJ doesn't doesn't interest me. Yeah. Doesn't interest me. I know I'm not getting 16 games out of Landry this for season. PPR. Uh, yeah, I'd like Landry, but then how many targets is he going is he going to lose out well, to if OBJ? He's not going to play a full season. A lot more. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but for the games that he is playing, he's going to miss out on a lot. He might True. miss out. He might have three games where he's a wide receiver one. Yeah. The thing with Landry last year was pulling the top. Exactly. Now he's I, not. I drafted Landry last, last year in a couple of drafts, but now I don't know how he's going to go from 120, 130 targets down to more likely 80, True. I presume. Um, While we're on it, we've uh, spoke also about players who we've drafted that we've regretted after we've drafted. Now, OBJ is someone that you got, Cal, and you weren't yeah. happy with it. I wasn't. But you're probably feeling a lot happier now compared to. Perhaps someone who drafted Zeke. Well, um, I drafted David. Melvin Gordon as my first pick. And Melvin Gordon looks like, well, we're not sure what his situation is going to be, but he's probably not playing a few games this year. Mm. So that was pick overall, pick 11, was it, for Melvin Gordon? Is that where you picked uh, him? No, 12. Pick 12. Pick 12. 12. And I traded down from 11. Had Melvin Gordon been there, he would have been on my <laughs> roster. <laughs> so you traded Gordon for Zeke. So I dodged the Gordon bullet straight into Zeke. I am happier I have Zeke than Gordon now because I, I yeah. do think they will do a deal. I think there's a lot of posturing from both set. sides trying to get more money. Um, and he wasn't yeah. upset about the uh, Zeke who comment from wow. Gordon Jones though. It's all just games, isn't it? Pollard. They say, Zeke who, you've upset me so now you've got to pay me more money but we've got <laughs> Pollard, we don't need you. Um, and Pollard's looking good as well. Oh. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. the backup as well, Darius Jackson's looking really good for how you expected him to look. They are not going to be coming out. The Cowboys are not going to be coming out think, saying, oh God, our, our backup running backs well, it's are not terrible. Saying, it's not saying it. It's watching it's visible. But Pollard the is, is, is quality. He they're is probably he is both quality. very he aware quality. of the fact that they're not going to get a better opportunity to take the RB1 position. Mm-hmm. So they are playing yeah. through their nose. Yeah. And something mind. else that, that comes out when you see this kind of player switches over and is great as soon as he steps in mm. with Connor and Bell. Yes. Where the argument for the entire time has been, is it just the O line? No. Yeah. Is so it that, just because the Cowboys have the famously Cowboys. got the best O line in football. Yeah. Is Pol- Zeke really just not that good? Pollard isn't Zeke. Zeke is that good. Pollard's looking good though. He's looking good. Pollard's looking He's good. not looking Zeke. Zeke would walk back Sounds into like that a Zeke job. Here in the same <laughs> now for our listeners, no. Wig is a troll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might have become apparent already with his trollish seven QB strategy. <laughs> Wig is a troll. He lives <laughs> under a bridge. He trolls. <laughs> no, but my 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 regret wouldn't be Zeke. At the moment, it's probably more A B. Just just because he's so unstable, and you know, and we've got to see how that pans out. Uh, once football starts. I'm hoping that's his sort of grounding a little bit more. He's going to get into play and he's going to sort of settle down a bit. But really, it's been a bumpy road over the past <laughs> few weeks. Um, and as and when you draft him, pick two, it's 
risky business in a dynasty in a redraft. I wouldn't be so worried, but it's no. just like his 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 career. I thought he was going to have three good years, a, a team on the up, and and wanting to prove something to the Steelers. But all he's proved so far is why they got rid of him, yeah. um, which wasn't ideal. So we will see. We will see. I I am a fan of the Chargers. I really like the Chargers, and. While the Jags might be the might be England's local team effectively, and you have to kind of back their play, I really really like the Chargers, and because I knew that my draft position would likely put me in line to get someone like Melvin Gordon, I was comfortable drafting him. You know, I I got right with the idea that that's the guy I was going to be taking in my first round, and I've got him, and you know, it's another running back going into his contract year, and. You know, the bell cow backs have all started to dig the heels in about contracts and blah, 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 and that sort of stuff. I don't regret taking Melvin Gordon. I just made sure that I had all of his backups. <laughs> now, Melvin, yeah. Melvin Gordon's ADP has slid, and he's probably going to be a third-round pick at this point, and that's taking him assuming that he does play. What I did get was Tyreek Hill in the fifth, who realistically should probably be in close to a first-round pick. Mm. So my, my overall picks aren't bad. I kind of got like a first, yeah. a first and a third. Yeah. You, now You did rob me of Hill though. Absolutely. So my my overall draft looks okay because of it. So I'm not sad about picking Gordon. I just went in with eyes open and made sure to back myself up. Now, I didn't really want OBJ, but I didn't expect to be having the conversation about whether I wanted him or not because he should have come before I got to him. <laughs> I was comfortable taking Mike Evans and I might regret taking OBJ over Mike Evans. I don't think you will. I think I you're think right. So that, that one is, is the thing that gives me pause because I know that I could have comfortably taken Mike Evans like I told myself I was going to do but because OPJ fell a little bit I was like, you know what? I can't ignore that guy. I'm probably going to take him. So I think if I've made any mistakes at this point they've probably not surfaced. Yeah. Only a few weeks. It's hard to tell so it's pre-season. <laughs> I feel like that there was a very humble brag. <laughs> oh, I did feel oh, a little bit like my, my draft was I made good. a small my, mistake when I corrected it rightfully in the fifth. <laughs> the, the my main thing. problem was only being very excellent, not <laughs> fantastically excellent. Although it, it wouldn't be like it's the first time the you know, roster baiting's come back and bit you, has it? Last year was horrific. Uh, yeah. but it's not because it's not because I've made bad choices yeah, I think you know the kiss of death for the first before. round running back that's right it's, it's because everything that I touched turned to pudding instantly <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't even waste its time either. before any games had been played half my team wasn't playable anymore <laughs> it was madness utter madness and even players I picked up to replace as soon as I touched them they were gone within the first few snaps of the game <laughs> picked up Jimmy Garoppolo just for one game <laughs> poof, he died <laughs> And I was like, right, okay, that's it. I, can't, I shouldn't have a fantasy team anymore because clearly it hurts people like some kind of strange little voodoo doll. <laughs> now, for your biggest regret, Dan, I feel like you're about to enlighten us for who's going to be next year's number one. <laughs> James Conner next year. James Conner next, next year. year. Yeah. I drafted him too early in the first. It was 11th pick, I, had, mm. I think, courtesy of Ben. I still think he's a good pick. But he's not first round material. I, 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 it was before I was aware of the the news of Samuels and, and See, cause smell I think, coming into it. I think that Connor's probably going to be good. Like he's probably going to be almost first round worthy this year. But going forwards, less so. That's right. So yeah. for the dynasty pick, it might not yeah. pan out quite that way as worth it. But in a redraft, I think Connor. He's going to have the job until he can't do it anymore. I think I'd have, I think there were better options there for me to have taken in the first. That's, yeah, you could that's, have taken Melvin. I could have, <laughs> but that would have been wrong. And, uh, <laughs> although for next season. <laughs> um, but Mixon, I, should have, I, I think he'd gone... I think he was still on the board by that point. Yeah. So uh, regret not having no, taken you see, I, I, I think even though there's the downsides with Connor, you shouldn't kick yourself on Mixon. No, People are really like high on him, mm. and there's a lot of talk that he's yeah, a legitimate top player this year. Yeah. But he's on the Bengals, yeah. and that just yeah. makes me want to leave him alone a little bit. Honestly. And running mm. back on a losing team, when the running back is good but not exceptional, look mm. at David Johnson, Saquon Barkley. They both did well on bad teams, but they're exceptional talents, and I don't put Mixon in those 
that kind yeah, of top talent. Probably not going to too much argument with that. He's not the same caliber. You've got, you're getting into your running backs, man. What are your thoughts? He on gets that a lot of opportunity. Yeah. He's yeah, up there in the, the, the amount of times he uses. If you're touching the ball, you're scoring points, and 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 that counts as something. He can't be a round one. You can't draft him in the round one because he won't get the production, but he will get the opportunity. So I'm I'm very happy for Mixon as my RB two because I think he might he might he could have a, a, a high ceiling, but he is gonna have a very high floor, and then yeah. that's that's fine. And what about you, Wick? Who's your uh... I have- Regret. Strangely, my biggest regret is also James Conner. <laughs> um, but I, I'll name another player for just for the the sake of this. But sure. James Conner's got me a little bit worried taking him in the second. Right. I would have felt much comfier if he'd slipped on the third. Yeah. Um, and since when I did pick him, I could have taken him in the third in place of Aaron Rodgers. Maybe Aaron Rodgers is actually my <laughs> biggest regret. Because in his place now I'm looking at, and I genuinely could have picked a different quarterback that I think will have a bigger upside. There was, it, it was myself to blame with it. Because yeah, no, no, hold on. Are you going to moan about taking another QB in your seven <laughs> QB draft? Because if that's the case, I, am, yeah. I think you should shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if only I'd have picked eight QBs instead yeah. of Yeah, no, no, no. It still would have been seven, but I think that I would have rathered Matt Ryan in my lineup. And the only way yeah. I could have got him would have been in place of Aaron Rodgers and then hoping Aaron Rodgers fell to me a bit later. That would have been a full round earlier, though, because I picked him one pick ahead of you. I, well, you didn't pick him until another round after that. So there were, there was another two rounds. So I would have been going really early for him. Oh, okay. Yeah, which which look at it. But I think Matt Ryan's going to outperform Aaron Rodgers this year. Yeah, I, yeah, can, I can I see that. So. It could, it could. But Aaron Rodgers could also yeah. outperform oh, everybody. Know. Yes. Just, yeah. It's a bit of an anomaly this year. With but I, I think I'd rather the safer approach of Matt Ryan. Is he safer though? I Rogers, feel he is. Rogers is. No, I, I genuinely feel Matt Ryan's safer. I mean, Rogers, how, how many times has he finished in the top five in the past oh, 10 years? When he plays a full season. Seven times. Yeah. yeah, but Matt Ryan's a perennial top five finisher as well. Maybe he isn't. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, I drafted him, he isn't. Uh, yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> but he typically, I, I think of all the years he's played, two times he's not been in the top five, something crazy like that. No, it's more than that. No, he, he's consistently not the top. Yes. Which is why he drops a lot, because Rodgers sometimes is the top. Mm. So you think of Rodgers as being number one quarterback, but when you average it out over the course of the careers with it... Rodgers is way higher than Ryan. No, Matt Ryan does finish higher with it. Rodgers will average out uh, way more than Ryan. I think Andy Luck's one of the best guys on that front, isn't it? Is there any, any year that Andy Luck's been healthy... He's, oh. he's been when Andy five. looks fit, Andy looks top quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. That, that's no secret yeah. with it, though. Yeah. It's just he's never fit. Yeah. Well, that's true, and I think we've seen a lot of that from uh, from the old Aaron Rodgers lately as well, where yes. he's missing time for mm. one reason or another. And, you know, you've, you've seen him have his slumps now. Game that would game. be more of a reservation I'd have to pick in Rodgers than, yeah. than Ryan. I, I, I think Ryan, Rodgers is a much better and much more... Uh, reliable. Well, we've come full circle. Yeah. We've started talking about quarterbacks. We've ended talking about quarterbacks, and I think our our time is is up for this week. I want to leave you though with a money saving tip, which came out from the NFL this week. Oh, really? A bit of oh. advice. If you were to, if the players were to hold out, they gave some some financial advice. Yeah. So if you're out there, if you haven't driven one of your cars in the past six months. Perhaps think about selling it. There you go. <laughs> it's good advice, good financial advice. Good advice. I believe yeah. the, the recommendations are that uh, you have one day a week where you don't spend any money. <laughs> there you go. Consider eating in. Just oh. Just thought. Just thought. There you go. For people who live just different lifestyles. <laughs> So that concludes another episode. Uh, Next week, we will be looking at having our mock draft in in a redraft league who can put together the best roster, see if we can put into practice some of our draft strategies. And considering it is draft season, a lot of you out there will be preparing for your own draft, so maybe it'll give you a, a little bit of information. Thanks for listening. Please leave any comments and feedback. 
any selection headaches or yeah. anything like that, get in touch. Yeah, if you've got a, a, a this or that option, um, we'll happily discuss that on our next week's episode. Mm-hmm.